We lose facial fat naturally as we age, taking away that youthful plumpness we once took for granted and hollowing out our cheeks and our eye sockets in particular. But aside from that natural and more gradual fat loss, there have been reports of patients losing facial fat as an unwanted side effect of clinical skin tightening treatments. Today, a little hope. I'm speaking to Ivan Galanin and he is a New York-based scientist and founder of the skincare company Adipo and he's dedicated himself to researching skin regeneration. And as a result, he's developed a cream to actively encourage facial fat renewal. And he believes that with the right interventions, including diet, it can be fully restored. I found what he had to say fascinating. This is what he told me about why we lose facial fat and how we can get it back. Ivan. Thank you so much for your time today. Are you joining me from New York? That's right. That's right. I'm based in New York, Manhattan. Ah, what a fantastic part of the world. It's been a long time since I've been there, but it's just, I love it. I love it. I must visit again. Please. Um, so I wanted to start firstly by just hearing a little bit about your professional background and what led you to specialize in skin regeneration. So. Um, I was trained um, in science at a major pharmaceutical company. I worked for Sanofi in inflammation research for about eight years. And so then I left and I went to work for Mount Sinai School of Medicine. And I spun out two companies out of Mount Sinai, one to treat a rare genetic disease called Farber disease, and one to develop treatments for colorectal cancer. So I was never really interested in beauty, and I had some exposure to dermatitis, psoriasis, those types of severe skin diseases when I worked in inflammation research, but it wasn't really top of mind. And then I had a really difficult skin condition myself that I had mm -hmm. been treating with a topical steroid, and it just got worse and worse, and to the point where I just had a very wispy epidermis and then just fascia. And anytime my skin was uh, tussled uh, during sports, uh, it would bleed. And so I started using an over-the-counter cream that my wife had on her counter just for emollients, just for some temporary relief. And then after about a couple of weeks, I could see that my skin was healing um, in a way that it hadn't in the years of using the steroid cream. And then by about eight weeks or nine weeks, my skin was completely healed. Um, and so I, I knew that this wasn't a placebo effect. And so I was curious what it could be. And so that's how I stumbled into the research around the dermal fat cells. And that's how I got started. So I actually came up with a completely different um, envisionment of the cream, which is the cream I had been using was just, it was regenerative, but it was mm -hmm. also uh, lipo uh, um, filling. So it would fill the fat cells and then they would become bloated. And so what, what when, when I tested this very basic cream, what would happen is that people would gain volume in their, in their faces, but it would be saggy. I started by testing the cream that was available on the market. Okay. Okay. And it was a simple, very simple cream with cottonseed oil. And okay. so, so cottonseed oil, like all oils, has long chain fatty acids. And they are very weak stimulants of regeneration, of fat cell regeneration. But the problem with oils is they also have lipids that the fat cells absorb and then they become big. So fat cells are the only cells in the human body that can expand by a factor of four. And so what happens with traditional approaches is the, the fat cells do get a burst of regeneration, but then they're taking up the lipids from the oils and they're just getting bigger. And okay. once they get bigger, two bad things happen. One is that they stop regenerating. So big fat cells actually send out um, messenger molecules called the dipokines that actually suppress regeneration. They say, okay, we don't, we don't need regeneration, which is actually counterintuitive. Um, 
And then the other thing that the large fat cells do is they send out chemical messengers that stop the fibroblasts in the skin from making collagen and elastin and hyaluronic acid. So, wow. yeah, so this is actually beautiful research that was done by Shiseido. And Shiseido showed that if you bloat the fat cells, they will suppress collagen production by 80%. Gosh. Ivan, I'm just sitting here wishing I had your brain and not mine right now, but I'm also processing what you're telling me. I mean, that's just a tremendous amount of information there. Um, we'll, we'll get into this research again in a minute. Um, I did just want to ask you, um, I mean, when it comes to volume loss in our face, fat loss has got to be one of the biggest contributors there, I'm guessing. And what causes it? What what causes us to lose facial fat? You know, it's it's a weird collection of things. So, um, and I would say I would put age as number three. Okay. So, wow. so, so what happens with aging is that the, the fat cells are still regenerating mm -hmm. very, very actively. Mm -hmm. They're just not regenerating at the same pace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the pace has slowed. Uh, just like with other, you know, cells in the body, like brain cells, muscle cells, you just need to work harder to maintain your brain yeah. networks. You need to work harder to build the same amount of muscle as you did when you were in your twenties, for example. Yeah. But let's let's say let's put age at number three. Number one, number one is sun exposure. So, uh -huh. um, so sun exposure, how does sun exposure affect fat cell regeneration? So sun exposure creates a inflammation on the surface of the skin. And the keratinocytes, the surface cells, actually have a very important role in fat cell regeneration because they're sending down trophic factors that, that cause fat cells to regenerate. So all the cells in the skin work together. And so when they're in a state of inflammation, they're no longer sending down those trophic factors and it and the fat cells are sort of left without sufficient nutrients, without sufficient trophic signals to regenerate. So sun exposure is, is definitely maybe number one. Okay. But here's a really weird one that we actually only discovered through our clinical uh, research. So the, the first area that people lose fat is actually not under the eyes where mm -hmm. the sun, sun exposure is going to be the most dramatic impact, but right alongside the mouth. So right I, on either side of the mouth. And we couldn't understand why, like, because no one talks about that. No one talks about this area. Yeah. And we couldn't understand why, uh, why, why this was the case. And finally, I was talking to a woman who does face yoga and she was 37 years old, face exercises. Mm -hmm. She was 37 years old and she had very severe depletion right here, mm -hmm. like 10, 15 years worse. She looked like she was, her, this part of the face looked like it was in her early fifties where this part, the upper part of the face looked like it was in her early thirties. Yeah. I hope you didn't tell her that Ivan. Uh, not at the time, but then sub <laughs> subsequently I, I broke the news. So, uh, so then if you look at rock stars, right? Mm -hmm. Look at like a young Mick Jagger or even like a really young Harry Styles. Mm -hmm. They have severe volume loss right here. And that's because the number one factor, uh, number two factor is dynamic movement of the face. So any wow. any dynamic, and this is something that I don't think most people, even most experts know about, but there are papers that review um, scientific literature and it's absolutely clear cut. Any dynamic movement. Like singing. Like singing, yes. Yeah. So we called it rock star mouth, yeah. Oh. Well, I'll never sing again, that's that, crushed. Well, so the dynamic movement, again, it's, you know, fat cells are very sensitive to lots of different things. And, and one thing that suppresses fat cell regeneration is dynamic movement. So either stretching or squeezing. 
as long as it's dynamic, um, it will uh, suppress fat cell regeneration. And so you can look at the 70s and 80s rock stars. Um, they all have this, like Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, it's it, that was like a very much of an aha moment. I was like, yeah, okay, that's amazing. That, that that explains what what we're seeing in the clinical study. So you've got sun, <laughs> you've got dynamic facial movement, um, and you have got you said aging was third. Yeah. Yeah, and just with the natural depletion, our cells are less active. And here's another bad one, which which I think people are going to be surprised about: high intensity exercise. Mm. So. Again, when you're exercising, when your body is doing high intensity exercise, it's devoting all of its resources to the lungs, to the muscles, to fill that, fulfill that activity. So it's saying all regenerative activity, let's stop. We, this is not the time for regeneration. We need to keep the lungs pumping. We need to have that oxygen flowing. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at bodybuilders, like The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, or yeah. others, yeah. they have they have this flappy these flappy uh, lower cheeks, and that's basically um, that's a very severe form. But even like you know, you look at someone like Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's she's amazing looking. So I'm not putting down her appearance at all, but because she devotes so much of her uh, wellness practice to high intensity exercise you'll see that she has gym grooves right underneath her eyes and on, on both sides. And so it's, you know, the Brits actually called it gym face. So they, they came up with that term. So I can't take credit for that. I don't have a gym face. So that's one I'm feeling good about because I don't do too much high intensity yeah. exercise. So, okay, tick. That one gets a tick. We like that one. So it's pretty, you know, it's pretty standard um it's pretty, it's lifestyle. Okay. Lifestyle, yeah. That's fascinating. Um, and then there's, there's one other that I wanted to ask you about one other cause, because um, on this channel, I have tried a number of different clinical treatments, including things like all therapy, thermal ablation. I've tried quite a number of at home devices like um, radio frequency and laser. And especially when it comes to some of those more powerful clinical treatments, there have been quite a number of reports of um, unwanted, un unintended facial fat loss from treatments like ultrasound and radio frequency. I'm not saying that's necessarily the norm, but we are aware there's a risk. And I mean, that's how we got connected because you had replied to, and thank you for that, to one of my viewers who was concerned about uh, facial fat loss following a, a clinical treatment and she she feared she would never be able to regain that fat loss and you had some slightly good news for her there didn't you yeah no absolutely absolutely we are actually, actually um the the company that i started adipo we're actually now working with about a dozen uh people uh who've had um uh facial fat loss from different procedures and we're starting to see um, really good recovery. Um, That's great. Yeah. So this. So the good news is, the fat is absolutely as regenerative as any other tissue in the body, and it can completely recover, complete recovery. Um, so we've seen this, you know, even in people in their late sixties. So there's there's no reason for uh, pessimism, and but the 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 thing about these procedures is they absolutely uh, cause damage uh, to the fat cells, mm -hmm. um, and I've 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 dug into this really quite seriously because it's hard as you probably experienced talking with experts. It's hard to really get a a straight answer. Yes, yeah. You know, some people say, well, you can you know as long as you don't use it on the upper part of the face, you're yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So when you when I hear that, I say like, OK, so that means if you do use it on the upper part of the face, you're going to get fat loss that's going to look bad. And if you lose it on the lower part of the face, you're going to get fat loss that might look good. But mm -hmm. in either case, you're getting fat loss. 
Yes. And and really the you know the 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 amazing thing is there's so little data. So the best data is actually from the people who developed the all therapy. Yeah. Cuz these guys were real scientists. They were academic scientists. I forget whether they were at MIT or place like that, but they were, you know, serious academic scientists. And they thought that they had really created a very clever way for shrinking, collapsing the SMAS, which is the tissue below the fat. Yeah. And so they published, they do what real scientists do, they published. And in these publications, you can see, yeah, like they are shrinking the SMAS, but they're actually showing in those in those slides that the adjacent fat is being damaged. You can see it. Right. And that's, that's but and they and that's probably the only really uh uh publication because the um the radio frequency device manufacturers they don't they didn't publish any um as far as I know, I don't think they published any biopsy data or any um uh visual data of the skin. They just yeah. showed Well that's it, because it's something that I have heard about but have never seen any tangible evidence so i've i have talked about it on the channel but i never feel that i'm i'm speaking about it from a terribly informed perspective and i don't like that especially as a journalist but i didn't want to just ignore it completely on a channel like mine where i'm talking about radio frequency devices and so on so um to hear that and to hear that, that there has been evidence as well is is um is really helpful and and really the the um it's it's really a scandal to be honest it's really a scandal how poorly um how, how poorly this aspect has been described and disclosed so we know for example right that when you heat up the skin to 42 degrees celsius that the the, the uh the, the the fat cells actually get heated to a higher temperature because they create more resistance and that mm. resistance uh, in turn creates more heat. But it's very, people really just, even in the publication from the Althera group, they really tiptoe around this. And it's like, okay, let's not look too closely at this. And so it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's really troubling to me, um, but that's the state of the industry. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of, unknowns and we seem to be you know technology develops and you know one one of the, the good things about um being alive at this time is that there is so much you can do to sort of counter the effects of of aging and we all want to look and feel as good as we can for as long as we can but uh we don't want to set ourselves back any as well and i think there's a great hunger for information uh real information from consumers um when it comes to rebuilding the um, facial fat, how how do you do that? How does your cream do that, do you think? Well, so before we get to the cream, mm -hmm. I want to tell people that there are other things, there are non-cream related things that they okay. can do to rebuild the fat. So the best thing they can do is to eat a protein rich diet. So 0 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. So for most people, that's going to be more protein than they're eating. So 80 grams, 100 grams, 120 grams um, a day of protein. And why protein? Because mm -hmm. protein is the regenerative macronutrient. It stimulates regeneration like no other nutrient. So if the number one thing you can do is regenerate is is to stimulate regeneration through protein and that's i think why the collagen is working i think uh -huh. part of the reason that ingested collagen has such an effect on the skin is because it's also regenerating fat cells because remember collagen is i don't know 90 uh 90 protein or 95 percent. i'm not sure um but yeah, so we don't make collagen, but yes, absolutely, uh, protein. The other thing is to stimulate blood flow um, to the areas of, of fat loss, either through 
derma rolling or sauna or any type of uh, cold, you know, showers, anything that will stimulate blood flow is actually... Is microcurrent, are you a, a supporter of that? I actually have a microcurrent roller um, that I use. You know, I would be a supporter of microcurrent if there was any data about it in the literature. Yeah. And it's really like so bad. Um, I'm not against microcurrent. I just, there's really no data. Okay. Like, like so many things. Absolutely. Yeah. But let, let me tell you about how, how the cream works, because mm -hmm. this is a real innovation. So I told you at the beginning that most, you know, other beauty companies know, you know, that there are fat cells in the skin and that you can plump them up by just feeding them lipids. And we talked about how they get bloated as a result. And then that, as a result, they stop production of collagen and elastin by the fibroblasts. So the innovation in our cream is that on the one hand, we're supplying a non-comedogenic lipid, linoleic acid from safflower seed oil, but we're balancing this with a really cool ingredient called black ginger. And what black ginger does is black ginger actually causes the fat cells to release any excess lipids. So it keeps them toned so that they're regenerating and they're cooperating with the fibroblasts to make collagen and elastin and all that stuff. So it's the first time that anyone had tried to, on the one hand, stimulate regeneration, but instead of filling the fat cells to excess, keeping them toned. And so when, um, when we were submitting for a patent, um, the, it was remarkable. We looked at all the prior art and no one had tried this before. Mm -hmm. so this was a, really a completely innovative and a little bit of a counterintuitive approach because everyone wants the quick win, like fill the fat cells, then the consumers get a quick filling result and they're happy. But ultimately, that's counterproductive. So how do we know that the cream is stimulating new fat cell formation? That's really the, how do we know? Because we in our study, we didn't take biopsies. So biopsies would be the gold standard, but mm -hmm. we didn't know which part of the face to biopsy. Um, and this is why it's important because the cream actually works very selectively through the skin's natural processes. So what does that mean? So it means that you won't get any unwanted fat cell regeneration in places where you don't need it. And how is that possible? How is the cream so smart? Well, the answer is the cream isn't smart at all. It just delivers these nutrients uh, to the skin's fat cells via the hair, tiny hair follicles on the skin. And in those areas where the, there are not enough fat cells, the skin is smart enough to recognize, okay, th in this particular spot, it's okay to respond with a regenerative impulse because in this particular spot, we're deficient, it. Mm -hmm. but right here, we're not. And so in our clinical study, we just submitted our clinical study for peer review publication, the six month results. Some subjects who were in their early 30s, the only place where they gained volume was right here. It's like a tiny little circle. They only gained it in that area of the face where they had become depleted. And then our older subjects, because remember, we talked about how age is one of the factors. Mm -hmm. They gained it all over the face. So it's wow. like they, they had, so one, our oldest subject who was 68 years old, she gained four cubic centimeters of volume on either side of the face. Four cubic centimeters. That is like a major facelift. The way the study worked is we would we we scan people's faces mm -hmm. with a 3D camera and it would build a topology map of the face. So pixel by pixel. And then when you did the next scan, it would do that again. And then it could compare one pixel to another and measure the pixel height. Mm -hmm. and so it's a quantitative, completely objective readout of, mm -hmm. where, of the volume changes. Yeah. Wow. 
Um, I mean, that's that's that for somebody of 68, I, I bet they were not expecting from a cream <laughs> to have that kind of response. Yeah, I think that I think that people were a, a little bit surprised, but more than that, just I think they felt joy, like the the sense that your body is is regenerative is a really it's a it's a positive emotion. So this is something that is available for people to buy right now. Is that right? That's right on on our website, and it's it is. I mean. The cream is not inexpensive. When you look at it, it's seventy-five dollars for a thirty ml bottle. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a subscription that reduces it by ten percent. But when you so on the surface, it seems like it's expensive. But when you measure it against the the alternatives, it's ridiculously cheap. Um, and I'm glad it is because. And here's the other thing, and we've started to tell people this. You don't need to use it forever. And you certainly you don't need to use it as frequently because by stimulating your own body, you're basically restoring a condition that you had 10, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. And so it's not like it's you, you become actually quite independent of the cream over time. And so it it I mean, I I tell that to people just because I don't want you know, I want to be truthful. I don't because because they'll ask me, okay, will the effect go away if I stop using the cream? And I say no, because it's not that the cream is sitting in your skin creating volume. It's that it's stimulating your body's own regenerative processes, and those are not going to go away. I, I love that honesty, um, and I think that will be appreciated by everybody watching that. Um, well, it is the honest channel. That's what we're about here. Absolutely, just be upfront. Um, so, um, how often, to begin with, uh, if we're if we're um, using the cream, would you use that twice daily, and then start once you're happy with the results, start kind of slowing it down a bit, or what do you normally recommend to people? Exactly, exactly, and you can use it only on the areas. You don't have to use it on your whole face. So, for example, if you're in your thirties, right? And really the two areas where you're going to get volume loss in your 30s are under the eyes because mm -hmm. of the sun and then around the mouth. And so you can just spot treat those areas once or twice, once or twice a, a day. And then one bottle will last you for two months or maybe even longer. And so, yeah, it's you don't have to do the whole face. You don't have to do the forehead, you know. Yeah. Just where you want to treat. Well, um. I'm going on to the website after this. That's for darn sure to, <laughs> to get mine. It sounds brilliant. And take the quiz. So we have a quiz mm -hmm. where we, we ask about 12 questions about lifestyle. And we give people a, a skin strength and volume score. Okay. Um, yeah, individualized. And then tips based on their lifestyle, what they can be doing. Although we've gone through a, a few of them already. So after speaking with Ivan, you might not be surprised to hear I did make a dash over to his website and I'll include a link to it in the video description. I bought the $75 active face cream and I paid $16 on top for delivery to the UK. And when it arrives, I'm going to use it and do a follow up video at three months to share my results with you. For now, I hope that some of you worried about fat loss will feel encouraged by what Ivan had to say. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.